Hello everyone and welcome to the first uh, recorded match of Red Resurrection as it is now uh, on CNC Net 5, currently in beta and developing uh, developing this version. Uh, I'm going to do some matches, record some games between people and try and show what the, uh, the gameplay is like in this mod. Um, we have a match here with uh, HCLI, I don't know if he wants his real or his normal username revealed or not, depends how well he does in this match I suppose, as Japan and as Yellow. And uh, we have Asylum here as the rust coloured confederation player uh, on the map Cabana Republic, I believe. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, look around. We've got an attack dog coming straight out for uh, Japan there. Pretty usual. He's obviously played this map before because he knows where the uh, bunkers are. And three engineers. Uh, so obviously there's a tech oil derrick here, there is a machine shop up here and the same on the other side for both players and another oil derrick here which allows expansion to this ore field so he's going straight for that which is a good move and what's happening here, he's, oh Asylum sending attack dogs straight out as well probably, to, oh there's another attack dog here from Japan but it's, uh, he was killed I guess Asylum's trying to get here first before the engineers but well, he he could have succeeded, I think, but uh, he's decided to turn back, and he's going to garrison that bunker as well with some conscripts. Uh, and it looks like. Japan is going to garrison these buildings as well. Meanwhile, Asylum is still moving into the middle of the map, uh, which on this map in particular is pretty uh, pretty important. Fighting over this area. No one's actually going for the uh, the airport though. And let's see. Asylum has not built very much. Let's see. Yeah, HCLI here already on his uh, well second power plant after a war factory. Asylum has just gone up to war factory, which is pretty slow. I wonder what he was doing. I guess he was concentrating on some other stuff. Oh, I guess he had uh, maybe hotkey problems. That's distracting him. Japan has garrisoned all these buildings. So, uh, just like one infantry each there, which is uh, a good tactic. Uh, lots of economy going there. Asylum's taking it slower. Let's see, neither of them have gone up to... And now that's interesting. So, one of the things I should mention maybe about this mod is that there are now um, four uh, tech tiers. Well, besides the base level of factory, there's, there's four uh, tier buildings instead of three in the original game, so the tech tree is a little more spread out. Um, and uh, so the first level is the arsenal and the ops tower. Arsenal for the Allies and the ops tower for the Soviets. Um, that provides uh, crazy Ivans and seals, um, so you can get those pretty early on. Um, but it looks like um, Japan has actually gone, instead of going for their, their tech building, seals and so on, they've actually gone for the uh, straight for the uh, Air Force Command which as they're playing Japan gives them Black Eagles and also Rocketeers since they require just the uh, Air Force Command in the barracks. So he's gone for early air which can be strong because these aircraft are very powerful but uh, is also expensive. Uh, they're 1500 each and so you do need quite an economy to keep building those things. Um, but he has uh, got plenty of uh, miners here, probably needs a second refinery so that they don't all get uh, jammed up. And he's scouting out with these rocketeers as well. Straight into... Oh, and he's going to spot all these crazy Ivans. Possibly could kill the crazy Ivan. Well, he could because there's no anti-air at all. 
but he's flown straight over, so that was lucky for Asylum. Oh, and I think he's realised he's coming back. Maybe he can get this engineer. No, it's gone for the Crazy Ivan. Well, that's a good move because uh, Crazy Ivans are very powerful, and uh, they can be if they actually reach the target. But uh, <laughs> they also have self healing, so one Rocketeer is not going to kill them. But uh, they can swim as well, so they're going to get get across. But there's some more Rocketeers coming to stop those Ivans, so that attack is going to fail. And now uh, Yellow already has four Black Eagles. Uh, he also has a Night 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 Hawk out, um, which are very useful units for the Allies. Um, Arsenal sniping, my favourite. Wait, what? Arsenal sniping? Is he done? What's that? Um, ah, maybe he built one up here. Is that what happened? No, I'm not sure now. Is he going to get this machine shot? I don't think so. Not with these Black Eagles. Uh, these are Scorchers, so these are a, a, a T1 anti-infantry unit for the Soviets. Uh, they are quite good against buildings, but they're better if you stick an infantry inside, because then they transform the turret into a rocket launcher, which is better versus buildings. Um, so I think he would have taken it out if he had done that. Um, and it looks like a Pierce Island built the uh, the Ops Tower, which gives him. But he's still got no AA up here, but the Rocketeers aren't going to be able to uh, do very much against those buildings uh, quickly. Um, you can get uh, nuclear reactors out a lot earlier. The whole tech tree has been changed around, so there's hopefully more options and it's a little more spread out. Um, so he did go for an early nuclear reactor, which is very uh, popular, but. Obviously that kind of puts all your eggs in one basket. And he's gone straight up to Tech Center as well, which is the Tier uh, 2. Well, Tier 3, I guess. T1 is the basic level. Uh, tier 2 for the Soviets, and it looks like Japan is still... Now they've built the, uh, the arsenal. Uh, or built and maybe another one, if, if one was destroyed here. Um, so he is a tech level behind, he's got plenty of power, let's see what these Black Eagles are doing. Because there are Rykov transports here which are the dedicated anti-air vehicle for the Soviets. But he sent them away so... <laughs> oh well. Uh, Japan's probably going to take out a ton of these, uh, a few of these vehicles. Because Black Eagles, one of their differences from the, the usual um, allied aircraft, which is the Lightning, um, is that their missiles, uh, instead of firing four separate missiles, they fire two, and those missiles individually split off into two, um, which, uh, and they do splash damage. So they can take out more vehicles um, that are grouped together because the missiles do have a chance of retargeting, unlike the, uh, the lightnings. Uh, and we have Asylum playing more aggressively, but I don't think he's going to really get anywhere here because of this uh, bunker, although it only has one infantry inside. Ooh, well they, that wasn't a good hit at all, that was unlucky. But they are all damaged. Oh, here we have uh, a power drop and a Nighthawk. And uh, I think one, one thing I didn't say before was the Nighthawk uh, uh, infantry inside the Nighthawk can fire outside, um, so they are very good harassment units, although they're incredibly weak. Literally a couple of uh, anti-aircraft shots will take them down, but they are very good at harassment and a powerful tool for the Allies early game. So it looks like he's lost the War Factory and the Ops Tower up here. He's moving his anti-aircraft up to take that out, push it away, but it is going to be able to escape. So that's a pretty good blow. Although he did already tech up to industrial plants, which is again because of the way that this uh, the, te the uh, tech tree has been restructured, you can get this uh, relatively sooner, I suppose, than than other things because you can get it after the tech center. Um, so you can choose to get this, or you can tech up further to the uh, the war palace. But. Um, 
it's a good thing to keep in mind that in, uh, unit production is a lot quicker than building production, relatively speaking, for the cost. So, teching up can be quite difficult. It puts you at a disadvantage because you, if your opponent builds two war factories, they're going to be pumping out a lot more units than you. Uh, and you're going to try and take out some of these. Oh! Nearly. Yeah, Black Eagles are better against grouped units for sure. And we have some. <laughs> well. There are plenty of anti air options, of course. You can build uh, flat troopers, and they're very good. And he's got some siege choppers now, which he looks like he's going to try and do a little sneak attack, although, of course. Japan has scouted all this. He does have some destroyers out as well, which is... It looks like he's trying to hide a very, at the very edge of the map, just in case. Um, because these destroyers are actually amphibious in Red Resurrection. And he has some up here as well. He's playing very sneaky. So they can uh, move onto the land, and uh, they will move slower. Um, but that can make them very powerful at attacking buildings and bases, and uh, maybe hunting down uh, units and all, you know, attacking units and retreating into the water. Uh, what's going on here? So he's just uh, mining from there, and he's gone for an ore purifier, and he's got a ton of power, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. That's for sure. Oh, and yeah, the demo truck unfortunately got picked off there. Uh, there's another one, but I think it will. I don't know. I guess it could sneak. Oh no, he's gonna do something. <laughs> Let it die. It's not gonna take those out. Wasn't, uh, wasn't close enough to either of them to really uh, do that much damage. Maybe he didn't know that they were uh, occupied yet. And what's happening here? We have an Iron Curtain already from Asylum. Which is again another thing, you can get that earlier than the nuclear missile silo or the weather control device. You can get Chronosphere and Iron Curtain at... Um, well, it's T3 here, but there are four tiers, so it's relatively earlier than in vanilla. Oh, 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 but those destroyers were just scouted, unless he didn't notice them. But they were just scouted by the siege choppers, so we'll see if he can react. Looks like Japan is going in to kill the tech center, but that is going to go down very, very, very quickly. And there it goes. And those rocketeers are just going to die, unfortunately. What's going on though with the siege choppers? Can I see them on the mini map? Oh, they came back. Okay. We do have the destroyers though. Looks like Asylum isn't aware of them, but I'm not sure. So they are going to carry on whatever move Asylum is making before. He could take these out pretty easily because he can, of course, they can deploy and uh, fire their siege cannon, same as they can in vanilla. Uh, we've got no tier three for. J oh yeah, we do. Of course, we have the intel complex here. That's how we can get the ore purifier. Not got any higher technology yet for either of the players by the looks of it. And these destroyers, they arrived on the land, but they're just standing there. So if only, if only their commander was here to uh, order them, because they could do some damage to this nuclear reactor. But they are literally just uh, standing there. It's a bit strange, I don't know why they're not retaliating, so it looks like something odd happened. And there was a demo truck. Okay, I missed this army approaching, so it looks like... Uh, Japan managed to sneak in an army and destroy a demo truck there, which destroyed the war factory, and he, he did it again! Ouch, so... Asylum is on the ropes here. He's got no more war factories. I mean, that was that was definitely a risky move, where he placed the, uh, the rebuilt war factory here and tried to force out a demo truck to destroy those units, but... Uh, of course, the demo truck was destroyed. 
instantly. Uh, I mean, he's going to be able to clean up here, I think. Especially if he plays with these sea choppers correctly, although these IFVs are definitely a threat. Although there are plenty of them, so I guess he'll, he'll chase them off. Uh, but there's more destroyers coming. Still not using this destroyer. I'm not sure what's happening here. But there's more IFVs coming in. They're going to be able to take out this Tesla reactor if they want. Um, he's back on War Factory tech. Oh! Okay, so that did some damage, didn't manage to kill anything. Which is a shame. Uh, yeah, and Asylum still has these buildings uh, occupied, which is a, a minor annoyance, but they don't have many... Well, he has a few of them occupied, but they don't have many, th many uh, units inside, so they don't really do that much damage. And... Okay. Guess I missed whatever that was. Some more demo trucks, I expect. And there's these two destroyers still, so there's a lot of action going on here, and now that's a good move, obviously. Asylum deploying those on the high ground there so he cannot uh, retaliate, but he's sneaking units by. This bunker is absolutely useless, and he needs to stop building these demo trucks, because the war factory... <laughs> oh no, he didn't need to sell it. He didn't need to sell it. Okay. Japan is really being aggressive now. And he's keeping these units streaming in, which is very good. Um, but I have a feeling these uh, units are going to get taken out, probably by the war miners, as they chip away uh, damage. And he also has them surrounded, but there is uh, a sentinel here, which is deployed by a safeguard. A support power for the allies, so they can spawn these uh, defences. Uh, for a cost, of course, and they take up power as well. Uh, but they can be very, uh, very useful. But it's been destroyed by the Tesla coil. And he's back on War Factory level again, but there's these destroyers now finally making a move. What's down here? Some uh, Aegis and another destroyer. Not sure what the Aegis is for, but I guess, uh, you know, if. Asylum went, it went to, well, aircraft, but also Kairovs and tried to sneak around the bottom. It's probably good to have that covered by some Aegis cruisers, and that nuclear reactor won't fall by the looks of it. Oh, but uh, Japan has dropped one of their support powers, uh, which is uh, Search and Destroy, and it drops these. Uh, little laser drones that operate by themselves, you can't actually control them or they'll attack anything that's uh, any enemies that are in the area. So they can be a right nuisance, and they're cloaked as well. But they're, they're quite useful. Um, and he's out of power. Interesting. I guess uh, because the yeah the nuclear reactor was just damaged enough that he was offline. I suppose he does have all this technology here and a few Tesla coils. Got a couple of grinders though, and they are amphibious as well. And they also s slow down their targeted vehicle, and they leech health as well when they attack them. So that destroyer is going to die. Aircraft carriers. Okay. But these grinders are going to be uh, a real threat for those. That's a bad move, honestly. It's going to lose them. Um, if Asylum sees them, there you go. Because these grinders are going to uh, be able to destroy these aircraft carriers. Because they're just going to get hooked in the, uh, in the slowdown effect. And they're just going to die, which is 4,000 credits down the drain at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, and that war factory is taking damage again. Oh, and these are spirit bombers here. Anti-structure aircraft for the Allies. At, at tier 4, so that means uh, that Japan has now teched up. Oh! I missed this! But the Iron Curtain, the Iron Curtain. Okay, so Asylum sent um, siege choppers into the enemy base. Uh, which were then EMP'd by the Equalizer, which is his allied uh, support power. But now, uh, when the EMP wore off, because uh, Japan wasn't able to kill them 
even when they were EMP'd for quite a while. He's now uh, iron curtain them in order to take out the construction yard and the science lab, which is the tier 4 building for the Allies. There's loads of things going on here. And it uh, looks like Japan is recalling these siege uh, tanks, the Shogun siege tanks, which are their um, sort of powerful T4 vehicle, the very, very long range when deployed. Uh, he's recalling them, I'm not exactly sure why, I guess that was just maybe a select all move, but they're walking straight into this full garrison building, so they're gonna get very damaged, if not entirely destroyed, walking through here. Okay, so two survived, barely. So that was uh, a, a bad oversight. Wow, this has been such a reversal, but uh, Japan does have another MCV out, so he can, he can build uh, MCVs currently straight out of the war factory with no other prerequisite. Um, oh, but the grinders are coming in. They're going <laughs> to try to take out the oil refinery, but the force shield is going to protect those. And there is a safeguard, a sentinel here. But then he's going for the arsenal, which is going to go down. And he's all out of power because of the uh, the force shield effect. So these uh, prison towers are useless, and those siege tanks are dead. Pretty dead. Grinders. Oh, but I don't know. The grinders are getting damaged. But the emergency repair from Asylum on the grinders will keep those alive. And of course, their uh, grinding attack does repair them as well. Uh, this prison tower is going to go down. What a reversal. What a reversal. Sneaky attacks can change everything. And of course, uh, all refineries actually store ore inside them. They can store, I think, currently it's about nearly 5,000 credits per ore refinery. But that does mean that if they are destroyed, you lose the ore that's inside and the money that's inside. Although they have, both players have about 10,000 credits, so that's plenty enough to build back up. Um, these grinders. Uh, this blue effect on the grinder here is um, the scrambling effect from this allied helicopter here, which is the scrambler, and uh, basically uh, it can make vehicles kind of go berserk and attack. Um, they will attack randomly, uh, friend and foe. But what happened here was quite hilarious. It looks like Asylum tried to iron curtain the grinder in order to keep it alive, but in fact iron curtains. Japan's construction yard, which is you know stopping it from dying. You should really use that grinder on something else, like this uh, airfield. Is it going to go down? Looks like it will. It's not getting repaired. Wow, this is clutch. This is so clutch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, he still hasn't got the Air Force Command, and there it goes. Good God! And finally, um, HCLI Japan in yellow has been able to push Asylum out of his base and he's he's attacking from the north here with another aircraft carrier. This is great uh, use of the, the map and units all over the place. Um, they're going to take out this uh, tech machine shop eventually, I think. Maybe he'll have to wait. Uh... Ooh, there it goes. Okay. So Asylum now uh, doesn't have a tech machine shop. Japan does, so their units and vehicles are going to self-repair, which is a very powerful thing. He's gone heavy in IFVs, that's because he's back to square one, literally, I think. Tier one, factory level, that's it, that's all he's got now. So he can't even build destroyers out of the uh, naval yard, only dolphins uh, and transports. But IFVs and uh, particularly Guardian GIs can be very powerful. They're obviously anti-tank when you put in a Guardian GI, and they have good range and they're fast, so you can kite uh, enemy units. What is happening down here? Asylum has a big force here. He's playing as Confederation, so uh, he gets these uh, tanks, which are called the, the Blitzers, and they uh, are kind of a long-range anti-tank uh, rapid-fire unit. Um, so they will be definitely good against these IFVs unless Japan uh, assaults into them. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, he's, and he's got his uh, Kazador gunship, which is another Confederation special unit that boosts... Um, he has some uh, 
lag here that boosts uh, the firepower of infantry underneath the Kazador, and uh, also fires these uh, kind of blinding fireworks that um, reduces the firepower of enemy units. Um, and here, uh oh, he needs to move. Looks like uh, Asylum has fired his artillery barrage, which is gonna take out everything. Damn! If only, uh, if only HCLI had noticed the effect, but he looks like he didn't, which is devastating. So that's his army gone. Because you do get. <laughs> So you do get um, you get warning to move away. I'll just tell him. <laughs> Okay, so after all that work that Japan put in to, uh, to kill Asylum, it was going very well. Things have been reversed. Um, I mean, I think he can. He could hold on here. Um, although it would be tough. But he could definitely hold on. Uh, but these. Oh no. Is he going to get it? The aircraft carrier is trying to target down this nuclear reactor. Ooh, wow. He needs to get one more volley off, but that grinder is doing work on the aircraft carrier. And it looks like Asylum. Oh, but he's just going to run an engineer and damn, um, all that work gone. The aircraft carrier is going to die. Um, and of course, we have uh, Boris here, the hero, the Soviets. <laughs> All those missiles they missed. Uh, he could be doing some work on these uh, base defenses. It looks like he's going to go in now. There are some infantry back here. Uh, and Asylum is, well, they've both uh, lost quite a lot of money. Looks like they've been spending their savings, which is good. Oh, we have here firebrands, which are cloaked infantry for the Confederation. Um, throw Molotov cocktails, and are very good against buildings and infantry. But the IFVs uh, can detect cloaked. So he uh, he saw it, which was good. He did do damage to that power plant. Let's see what's going on up here. So he has built an arsenal, but he's built it up here, away from his base which I think is a good idea, and he's built the uh, intel complex again, so he's teched back up onto tier 3 now, which opens up some options. He's not going to be able to snipe Boris though, is he? Oh! And he did get Boris with a couple of IFVs with, uh, I think, either GIs or uh, SEALs inside, but I think, I think GIs. Those blitzers though. Good. Uh, long range, mostly good against, uh, most powerful against uh, vehicles. Those are going to go down, but he's flying in a scrambler. Oh, but the effect didn't take because it does have random variants, so they're best used in, t in pairs. Um, he's going to send a second one in. Oh, he built a second one. And that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. And you need, uh, Asylum needs to move these uh, Cazadors because the, the <laughs> missiles are just hitting the cliffs. Um, but he's put some infantry up here with a power drop. And he's built a prison tower which is going to send Asylum away. And <laughs> Japan has built some more Nighthawks, which I think is a good move because you can. I mean, they're. Obviously, they, like I said, they get taken down very quickly. 
by anti-air, but they can do good harassment work. Asylum streaming infantry and another demo truck across the map, and he's on to tier 4 now. The War Palace, the highest uh, tier level. There is a sneaky grinder here, which might have some infantry inside, because grinders can carry 4 infantry. Well, they have 4 passenger slots, so it depends on the, uh, the size of the infantry unit, but that's about... Whoa, okay. <laughs> Fantastic, so uh, HCLI there used his uh, scramblers to cause the demo trucks to attack each other and stopping them in the wake, although he doesn't, he doesn't have any Black Eagles anymore, I don't think, so using those scramblers to great effect. Okay, look out, what's happening here? And he can run away. <laughs> Very powerful. Um, I did recently boost that effect because uh, it was underused, so it could well be too powerful now, but uh, this is what testing and balance is for. Oh no, but a siege chopper is taking out these defenseless scramblers. Uh, slowly but surely. They are able to escape, although they could get caught by these flak troopers. Yes, and they are, one of them got taken down. And these iron curtained a buttload of demolition trucks, so they ain't gonna be stopped by nothing. Classic tactic right there. One of them gets destroyed. Oh wow, and they did take out the MCV even after it unpacked. But it can build another one. <laughs> and it didn't actually do very much more damage because they all went for the construction. <laughs> okay, and uh, he's finally giving in. Uh, and Asylum is uh, victorious in that game. <laughs>